guys you are welcome today uh it's a, this is a continuation of our program the back end series today we'll be listening to one of the greatest entrepreneurs in our city his name is mulu Sheung, the owner and uh, let me call him the father of tesla radio okay so mr Sheung, you are welcome thank you very much show. thank you very much please let our viewers meet you all right. Um, thank you very much, firstly, for having me on the show. So my name is Simu Elishon, and um, I'm the founder of Tesla Global Brand. So Tesla Radio is just like one of the sub-brand uh, company on that Tesla Global Brand. Yeah. Oh, welcome. Okay. I have followed you for a while. First of all, the reason why we decided to do this particular series, the backend series, is the fact that we've seen that the global economic downturn is hitting hard on businesses and that's a global phenomenon yeah but for us locally we can we can feel it we can feel it I, I was driving down this morning i was listening to a radio presenter and it was all lamentation lamentation yeah. businesses are crumbling the prices of things are going higher salaries are not increasing Yet some persons who even had jobs before have been laid off because yeah. the business owner needs to at least stabilize himself and yeah. his family. You know, so I want to ask, how are you coping? How is it that your business is still thriving? You're still making impact. The last time you were with us, you were still willing to even hire more persons to work with you. What <laughs> is it that is working with you that our viewers need to learn from? All right. Um, firstly, the when we before we started, we didn't set up because like we want to have a business. It's actually from like looking up building legacy. Yeah. So that point, the difference between someone setting up a business and someone setting up something of a legacy for a long time, I already know there will be a lot of hardship and tribulation. So we even our kickoff started was in, during the COVID time which was a lot of dramatic, like bad things all over the world, business, everything crumbled. And um, so from that moment, I knew, I've always had in back of my mind to be expecting, you know, something negative or something all over the world or something happened, how can we survive? So what actually made us or what we're able to be able to survive or to this extent, it um, because we believe not in magical stuff, but we believe that uh, the hard work of a low expectation. You know, when people started a business, you know, they will like, oh, start this business and expecting this huge amount of money or like rapid growth. <clears throat> it's not rapid growth. Like slowly progress is actually going to get us to where we are. So, just the only single key is that we are very, very be patient not rushing too much or expecting too much of a progressive like that so we have the patient mindset okay let's do this so doing the uh, patient process anything that is happening to the business or in, in in the world generally tends not to much affect us because people that they were mostly crushed by 95 percent whether during covid or during this uh, recession period is because of their huge expectation oh i put one million into my business i expect by the next 12 months i shall have made three million but we will be like oh we put one million into this business in the next 20 uh 24 months we should be expecting maybe 1.3 not three million or five million so when things is crumbling we just believe that okay we are being patient and let's just take it slowly and slowly and slowly so with that we're able to actually manage during this recession time because our expectation is not too high in okay. um, from okay. our that's, business that's awesome that's instrumental because if i pick anything from what you're saying it means because people have this high expectation obviously their expense the way they spend money the way they hire people the way they do a lot of things will be tended towards to meet that expectation mm -hmm. so if for any reason that expectation is not met the the tends to be added 100 percent and very very importantly is that you know the last time i was aware uh, i was like talking to the guy like you actually repeat the thing is what most of the sme or whether middle business or big business 
does wrongly in Africa, especially, is that they tend to focus on the products they were selling. Not because the most important thing is in we, our product or our service is not the most important thing. Our team, you know, building a solid team that you reach out to them, to him, they were active. You know, we say, okay, we're going this direction. They are always on their toe. So businesses or brand don't focus on that team building because the, the revelation from the beginning is for legacy. So the most focus has to be, what about I'm no longer available? Will it continue? And how is it going to continue if the team were not well built? So focus on that team building and that team building has actually helps us in trying to find our way out in any ramification in every situation. So that team building actually wow. part of the key to our Wow, your, your, your response seems to be opening up a new line of conversation. Yeah, well, when, you, when your expectation is low and you have shared, meaning for instance, there's an investment of a million naira and we are expecting in 24 months we'll be able to hit 1.3 million. It means the expected inflow is not that high. Yeah. So looking at the inflow not too high, how do you match that with getting a solid team, knowing that experts or professionals, the best of hands at the moment are very expensive? How do, yeah. you, how do you manage that process? Okay, um, I think uh, most of our team were actually in built, built to what they are today. Okay, most okay. of them. So there are people you, you, you attracted. So we, we hired wrong. at first we hired them for uh for certain um their office they actually want to get in but i put much of that devotion on them helps them to become more better in that industry uh that um, office that we've actually hired them for so aside from maybe for instance if they need any tools or something that can cause a little bit delayed progressively in what they were trying to do, the office just help them faster so that they can focus on what is very, very important. Okay, let me do case study. Let's assume we want to launch a project and we're building a, a community, a, 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 a home-based office system which looks like nobody ever walked into our office. They'd be like, oh, is everybody here brothers? Because we built that culture. So when anybody, because everybody also always have challenges every single day. So I notice, I'm always very so curious and serious about what is happening in their life, in their family. So if I just notice a little slight, like, what is happening? So like something is happening. So the office tend to help them rectify most of problems that could be causing their, they, they, they can be making destruction, causing them not to be more creative. So with that, and I think most of business are not looking at that. What business, most of business think about, or care about is come to the office or do the job, do the work, do the work. What about what is making the person do the work? If he's having a problem in their family or from home, the person can never concentrate on be able to do to the best point of it. So we actually look about, even though they are parents' birthday, the office celebrates. If you can bring your mom to the office, bring them, we'll celebrate. You know, those are the culture, you know, it's cultural building, not just because they are not staff. People that work with us, they are not staff, every one of them, they are team members. Because there's difference between a staff, a staff is the person that works because of the wages. But a team is someone that, is fully soaked into the vision and the mission of what we're trying to build. So most of them are actually on team and I never, neither the or the rest of the management ever treats anybody as a staff. We treat them wow. as a team member. Wow, 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 this is awesome. If there's anything I can pick here, first of all, you talk about the fact that you started this business or you started your group with a legacy in mind. So 100%. I had a conversation with somebody else on this same series who talked about a, a time like this, a time of challenges, it needed to go back to the why. 
of his business. So if there's anything that is standing out in what you're saying now, is the fact that the why of a business always come forth yeah. in guiding in guiding how the business goes. Yeah. So your business was built around building a legacy, not necessarily yeah. just making money. For the next 500 and years. You can see that. <laughs> and that seems to be affecting how decisions are made. 100%, yeah. That's awesome. Then secondly, the other thing you have emphasized here is the culture that you have been able to build around your people. You know, for us in the Trescaro group, part of uh, our cultural values, our culture of family. But listening to you, it seems to me that you have so much indoctrinated your people with the same culture, that culture of family. So the next thing you're talking about celebrating the staff's parents yeah. on their birthday, that's, yeah. that's something that we business people need to pick out here. Because the truth of the matter is, in trying times, your team members will stay put. Then your staff will be looking for jobs somewhere. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. So when you build, when you build people to become yeah. teams, it it makes the work easier. Yeah. Okay. So, what's your advice for struggling businesses? You know, if if I pick something from you, I think you have dealt with the the the, the why of a business might cause challenges for you but now there are businesses that are currently struggling things are tough situation is hard on them what should they be doing at this moment okay um well even big businesses that are worth billion dollars are even struggling and um everything i've said since mine does not mean maybe it's just flourish for us yeah but just that we know how to get ourselves out of problem and to make sure we're back on our toes. So for any businesses, you know, um, watching this or listening um, to this, you know, your why actually matters a lot because if it tends to start running a business with the hope and expectation of having a breakthrough within just a little, um, within a little short time, you will tend to be crushed out because interesting thing is that as you are planning, the government are planning something that is going to almost definitely crush you. So for for you as a young or you're struggling at the moment, I think first lower your expectation. Because the time you lower your expectation, it's not just going to only help you a lot, but actually helps the way you move. People tend to want to eat the jackpot very fast. Because the slowly, people tend to like the progress, the process of becoming a good multi-billion dollar brand is more valuable than just becoming it. Because becoming is what people focus. What about the process that, you know, before I become a man, I was a baby. What, how was my lifetime before I was sitting down right there? That is what matters, not the sitting I'm saying and all these things I said, because anybody can do it. So if you're struggling at the moment, is because the perception of force your higher expectation. And what I would recommend for you is very important. Lower your expectation and cut your coat according to your size. You know, I don't know the kind of business you might fight yourself in. And 2023 is here already. So it's something that um, not only even if your business, you if you're struggling, is so very, so huge and so big that you couldn't even sleep at night. Probably you need a coach. You need someone to put you through. Because a lot of SME businesses in Nigeria start a business not even because to make money, not even because of legacy, but they just feel like the status is cool as a business owner. Or it's easy for you to put it on your Instagram and do entrepreneur. Are you really CEO? Are you really? So what you have to just understand is you need a mentor. You need people to guide you through and no matter what you're trying, you are uh, facing at the moment, someone has done it in the past. And there's always business that are doing very, very well in your same industry. Nothing will pick you, you know. Shame is only for the losers. You can never be shamed when you ask your fellow business owners, even though you people are doing the same thing, to put you through some things. Because in the business world, you need collaboration. So you need to educate yourself and lower your expectation. And with that, I believe you'll be able to put yourself back on a meaningful track, um, track race. Okay, thank you so much. 
uh, uh, re-emphasizing that I hear the word process. Yeah. Process. Because people, in, in, when we when we envision this this whole concept, we call it the back end. Okay. Part of the part of the motivation was the fact that the people we see, the the Elon Musk, the Bill Gates, the Mark Zuckerberg, and all the likes that are building multi-billion businesses. What we see in their life is what I would call the front end. One hundred percent. Yeah. But there is a back end which is where the process like you have just said now it's not enough to hit the multi-billion business yeah. it's not enough but there is a process and like you said the process is far far more important than the result than the results you know it looks like the world celebrate results that's the amazing thing yeah, the world celebrate results. so if you are able to get results without understanding the process yeah. the world needs to celebrate yeah but the truth of the matter is that you face yourself when you lie down on your bed with your account running 200 million naira hmm. but you know that if anything happens to this 200 million you don't have a process that you went through to acquire that yeah. money, that you can go through it yeah you are that's actually more afraid yeah that's why I, I use the word that uh, uh in africa yeah. the politicians are the poorest people you know why I think so? why this somebody a... said poverty is lack of something yeah. and the fear of lacking something. So the reason why African politicians are a massive wealth is not just now I'm in a place I have access to this wealth. If I don't keep it now, how will my future be? Yeah. You see, because now they are afraid of process because yeah, exactly. now they are in front of money yeah. but they have not built a process so they rather want to steal more that's no, how somebody yeah. will steal billions and at the end if you even calculate spending one million naira every day you will not finish these billions for each one day <laughs> so why would yeah. somebody have mass of wealth because of the fear of yeah. lack of process yeah so entrepreneurs watching and listening to us if you are able to build a process, if you are able to put a process in place and take that advice, seek for a coach, seek for a mentor. The truth of the matter is that sometimes when we think about this coach, this mentor, thing, we always think that a coach has to be somebody that is perfect. The truth <laughs> is nobody is perfect. Yeah, a coach is very strong then. Yeah. yeah, just that for you to have someone in your life who holds you accountable Table. to yeah. what you have said you want to do. Yeah. I want to achieve this. Then you submit it to somebody yeah. who is able to hold you accountable, who is able to share insight and recommend guided principles to help you achieve this. You know, because part of the challenge of a lot of small business is that we carry the title CEO. And as a CEO, we report to nobody. Yeah, so yeah. So we yeah. report to nobody. So at the end, it's only when we have issues we realize that that is thing. So you don't need to wait. Take that advice. You don't need to wait until you have problems before you begin to connect with people, people. that can help you. So in rounding up, I think we spent a lot of time. Okay, we still have some time. Okay. Uh, but um, before, I want to say one or two things about that process. Okay. Because um, I personally am more scared of starting anything else over. Because, you know, like uh, doing the business speech we had last week, you know, a lady, uh, they paid for the store, they, she's eating free food and all those stuff like that. So, and now she was like, oh, his business wants to move to the mountain. But the reality there is that the process is not just only something that we have to mostly focus on because the question is how do you become that thing if everything is taken like they practice this uh, undercover billionaire in the us so they take everything away from you and they want you to build a million dollar business with just hundred dollars in 30 days and these people are doing it why because they knew how they actually become a billionaire in the first place. So, if some of you watching this, your parents actually buy your first equipment and the right place, or you are eating a free food, or uh, 
uh, they're taking care of good care of you at the moment and you say you're running a business there is nothing wrong with that but i would like to tell you if there is a crash today because i had a, a friend of mine the father was into is an nfc sometimes so they plan that once she's done with uh, the bsc she'll go to canada or to go and do masters and any other what kind of degree so but what happened was that uh, like two years before she's going to you know finish school the father lose the job yeah. and now the person is not yet in canada still in nigeria but the dreams were shattered now when she had the conversation with me i know the dream was not shattered but what makes it to look as if the dream was shattered was the high expectation yeah, and called on the father. On the father. So now, when the father, when the stuff is not longer any available, you know, now she is not living on herself, funding for herself, doing everything she has to do for herself. She even the remaining school she has to even be the one to you know sponsor herself or through it. So the process of becoming a good entrepreneur, or becoming a good business owner. Some of you, you live for the weekend. You know, you go to party, you, you move around, you enjoy life in the weekend and you hate Monday. And you tend to be one to successful as an entrepreneur. Uh, you've not even started and you've not even started warming up at the moment. So the process, can you give account from Monday to Sunday? Yeah. Can you give account? So if you can only give account from Monday to Friday, that two days, you are not an you, you, you've not even started, you've not even wake up from the bed of reality at the moment. So please, the process of becoming the good business owner or entrepreneur is something we have to focus on and never forget. If everything is taken away from you today, will you be able to, you know, survive or start all over and how long will it take you to come back to that same position? So that thing is something that I'm very, very uh, not only grateful for, but I'm very mindful of it. That what about if everything went down? How am I going to be? How will I cope? And I was like, well, I will count, I will start with the hard work all over again and again. So even though I'm still doing the hard work to you now, so the process is what um, focusing much on, please. Yeah, because the truth is, when 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 people envision entrepreneurship. You know, when people use comments like be your own boss, yeah. the first thing they think they want to achieve is to have free time. You know, entrepreneurship means so I can come to work when I like. Yeah. But the, <laughs> the, 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 the thing that a lot of us don't understand about coming to work when you like is that that when you like has to be earlier than you used to go to work when somebody was paying you. Yeah. And closing when you like means that you are Late hour. later than you used to close. Yeah. So somebody actually said entrepreneur is entrepreneurship is quitting your nine to five to start working 24 hours. Yeah. My heart we, no. Yeah. For instance, <laughs> I particularly don't have a Saturday or a Sunday. For me, anytime I open my laptop and work. And that could happen at any time. So in trying to even manage that, sometimes you spend more time at the office, yeah. you try to say, oh, let me keep my laptop in the office so that I, at least I have some time to do all that. But the truth of the matter is that at that beginning of building a business, a lot is required. Yeah. And hard work, you cannot... I hear people use the word smart work. What smart work simply means is applying technology to hard work. Oh, Not like... Think, so don't think that people. smart work means no. Smart work can outweigh hard work. Yeah. Because a lot of people said work smartly, not hardly. But why some people have tends to be confused a little bit about that terminology is that working smart simply means um, um, uh, your okay for risk, okay. Let me use a case study. Before you become a professional engineer, you'll have taken off some time to master the field very very well. Yeah. So you can now work smart because you've gone through some past hard, work. hard works in the past. So yeah. when some challenges just came now, it's easily for you to you know navigate faster to do it with you because you had experience in the past. But that hard work, hard work with beat talent. If talent think is too good enough to work hard. Because you think, okay, I'm talented in singing, I'm talented in uh, doing content creation, I'm talented in building products. But someone that is working the clock, without right. using the clock, 
you know, it, you'll just be amazed that you wake up one day and you'll be like, oh, these guys are at the top. Because what? When you were sleeping, yeah. what are they doing? They're walking. Yeah, they were walking. When you were partying, when you were gisting, moving all around, what are they doing? They were actually working so aggressively, so hard. So that hard work, talent can't actually outweigh hard work. Because hard work means is either it works or it works. There yeah. is nothing like go back. Nothing like go back. Is either it works, you know. And there is this saying of burning your boat, you know. You go to the war, the, the, the means of transportation you guys use to get to the war, the first thing is destroy them. So when you do it, me. is that we win and we die here? So there's nothing like no retreat. So, but if those things are there, they can be like, oh, well, let's retrace back, let's move yeah. back because, you know, they're going to kill us. But when you burn everything first, you'll be like, boy, there is no way. So we have to just definitely win. So please, that working smart and that hard work, hard work is so aggressively beyond. But someone that is working hard not knowing what he or she is doing probably may be in a circle because people confuse yeah. movement with progress. progress yeah. You can move in several places and never get anywhere. But so, but if you know what you are doing with that hard work, but the sky is just the beginning of the stepping stone. Hallelujah. Hey. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, yeah, that is very, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, because the inspiration of this show also came in from, yeah, because I do listen to some of uh, your content on uh, YouTube. So, you know, but the Bible lesson from, and I also saw some yeah. um, creators already start pitching into that direction of, you yeah. know, picking Bible lesson, you know, like that and share with um, people. So yeah. it's something, yeah, it's not taboo. It's very, so we need the audio at that point to be well increased. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shil. Yeah. I'm sure our people have learned a lot. Please feel free to leave your comments at the comment section. Tell us what you learned the most. Tell us areas you think we need to expatiate on and feel free to follow Sheon on his various social media platform that will be showing on the screen. Feel free to follow our social media platform that will be showing on the screen. I'm sure we're going to do this again some other time. Sheon, yeah. thank you. Thank you very thank much. You much man. Yeah.